Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, I'm Janetta, an author who loves to draw. On my channel, I focus on combining storytelling with art. If that's something you're interested in, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let's get to it. SSMD, so it begins. Chapter 27, The Case of the X. Eva. Lim, I assume feeling sorry for me, handed me his phone. Thank you, Lim, I said, resolving in my mind never to forget his name. I stepped away from him and Mr. Benz and called Kendra, who had given my spare key for emergencies such as this one. She was just finishing her morning run and said she would be over in about a half an hour. Ending the call, I handed Lim the phone. Thank you for letting me use your phone. I throw Mr. Benz an evil look before stumping back across to my place. I sat on the front step and waited for Kendra. I can't hear him, but I watched as Mr. Ben say something to Lamb, who then continued on to the moving truck and grabbed another box. Mr. Ben, however, headed my way. Don't worry, I'll be brief. I don't know why you have taken such a dislike to me, but the fact is that we are neighbors. Just so you know, I'm not interested in playing a void, the mean neighbor lady, or having a confrontation with you whenever our paths cross. We don't have to be friends, but it would be nice if we could at least act civil when we see one another. So you have a week from tomorrow to decide if you can be cordial the next time you see me. He turned and walked away. I spent the next 30 minutes watching and waiting. Finally, Kendra arrived with the key and let me in. So, do you want to tell me how you ended up locked out? She asked as she rummaged through my refrigerator. She pulled out a pink grapefruit. Yeah, if you tell me why you didn't tell me, you knew that Mr. Benz was moving in next door. Mr. Benz? Is that what you call him? Her mischievous smile returned. Since I don't know his name, that's what I call him. Do you want to know his name? Kendra leaned on the counter and started pulling a grapefruit. Something tells me you want to tell me his name. So what is it? Kendra peeled a slice of grapefruit off and popped it in her mouth. She chewed slowly, pretending to savor the flavor, as she savors the information she's about to provide. Finally, she swallowed and said, Well, dear sis, your handsome single neighbor's name is Michael. You're joking, right? Not at all. His name is Michael. Just great. I'm trying to get any thoughts of Mike out of my head. And now every time I see my neighbor, that name will pop into my head. No wonder I don't like him. Oh, you like him, all right. You just don't want to like him. Kendra popped another slice of grapefruit in her mouth and smiled. Leah. Look, Leah, why don't you do a trial period with us for the next month? I know you work a full-time job, so why don't you come work with us over the weekend? I'll show you the ropes, and then after you've had the bird's eye view, you can make a decision. I like that idea, Leah says, sticking out her hand to shake on it. Alana stood. Honey, we are practically family and almost business partners. She walked around the desk and gave Leah a hug. Now come let me get you some breakfast. I've invited that baby brother of mine to join us for breakfast to make it more enjoyable for you. She put her arm through Leah's and walked her back to the front of the cafe where Mari was already waiting at a table. He stood and smiled at them and pulled out both their chairs. He seated his sister first so that he could pull Leah in for a quick kiss before seating her. Leah was happy and enjoying her breakfast when things took a turn. Leah, I thought I spotted you when I was walking past. Justin stood there looking a bit upset. Leah had not returned any of his calls and had turned him away the last time he'd done a random drop by. Justin, how are you? Leah's voice cracked a bit under her nerves. I'm fine. I'm just wondering if he is the reason you haven't bothered to return any of my calls. Justin looked pointedly at Mario. I am and will continue to be the reason she isn't returning your calls, Mario said standing. Leah and Alana stood as well. Justin, please don't make a scene here. You know as well as I do that there isn't any reason for you to do so. You must be between conquests. And for the first time, I'm not there to fill the gap. And you are upset about that. 
but we both knew that I would eventually move on. Don't try to make trouble for me because you know this is not about us being together. Justin stood there eyeing Mario for a few more seconds. He glanced over at Leah, who pleaded with him with her eyes. Whatever. You aren't worth the effort anyway. She's all yours, partner. At least until she gets tired of you and comes back my way. With that said, Justin left the cafe. I'm so sorry about that. Justin and I haven't dated in over two years, Leah said as they all sat down. She didn't mention that they'd been off and on lovers since they had broken up. She looked over at Mario, who seemed a bit upset, but still took her hand in his. Leah looked over at Lana, who was focused on the door. Mario, brace yourself, Alana said, looking behind them. Leah and Mario turned and both watched as his ex-wife came breezing through the door as if she owned the place. Now what? Leah said to no one in particular, bracing herself for whatever Carla had to say. Sharon. Sharon spent part of her Saturday in her office avoiding Philip. She needed time to think. So when Paul, one of her business partners, called and said he would be going into the office and wanted to know if she needed him to pick up anything for her, she asked him to pick her up. Paul stuck his head in her office. I'm just about done. I need about 20 minutes. Will that work for you? Sharon, who hadn't done anything but sit there thinking about whether she should divorce Philip or not, tried to hide her sadness behind a smile. 20 minutes works for me. Perceptive, Paul came into her office. He walked around her desk and knelt in front of her. I know you're going through some things right now that you may not want to share. You have a tendency to put other people's needs first, but you need to know that your happiness matters just as much as everyone else's. He reached up and rubbed her cheek, which did some surprising things to Sharon. With new eyes, she watched him stand and walk out the office. Chapter 28, Torn. Dear SSMD advisor, I'm experiencing relationship burnout. My husband and I have been together since freshman year of high school. We dated through college and married right after graduation. Except for a couple of breakups that lasted less than a month each, we have never been apart. Now we are in our 40s and both of our kids are away at college. After all these years, we are finding that we are strangers to one another. Somewhere during our life, we fell into a routine that didn't include focusing on our relationship. Now everything he does drives me crazy, and I know he is feeling the same about everything I do. I love him, and he says he loves me, but I'm wondering if it's time for us to move on. Sincerely, burnt out on love. Eva. I was noodling over my response to burnt out on love's post when my phone rang. Hello, I answered. Hi, Eva. I know you are working, but I was hoping you could come by this morning. I need to talk to you. Philip is at work and the kids are in school, so it would be a good time for us to talk privately. Sharon strung the words together so fast that I knew she was anxious about something. Of course, Sharon. I could use a break anyway. I logged out of the website and grabbed my keys and purse. Fifteen minutes later, I was ringing Sharon's bell. She opened the door and I was a little taken aback at how broken she looked. Sharon always looked put together, and today was no different, but her spirit was different. She gave me a weak smile and said, thanks for coming, Eva. She stood to the side so I could enter. When does that lead cast come off? I asked, looking down at her cast. Tomorrow, thank goodness. I go back to work on Monday, and Lord knows I'm ready, Sharon said. We settled in at the kitchen table with some coffee. So what's going on with you, Sharon? I asked her. I'm torn, Eva. A part of me wants to walk away from this marriage, and a part of me wants to stick it out and see if I can make it work. I thought you and Philip had decided to stick it out. It's amazing how fast relationships can bounce from one extreme to the other. That was before he found out that I did nothing to stop him from sleeping with Leah. Since then, he has been walking around here like I was the one who had done him wrong. He even had the nerve to say that he was leaning towards us divorcing instead of going to see a marriage counselor. It was as if he was trying to punish me for what he'd done. I got fed up and told him to get out. If it hadn't been for PJ crying and asking me not to kick Philip out, he would have been out on his ass. Sharon's voice became angry as she spoke. 
But now that you have calmed down a bit, you're not so sure, I asked her. Like I said, I'm torn. Do you still love him? Even though I don't like him at the moment, I do love him. Can you forgive him and learn to trust him again? Forgive, yes, but trust? I'm not sure I can. Sharon sat back in her chair and looked out the kitchen window. Look, Sharon, you don't have to decide this instant whether to divorce or not. Take some time and see if you can get past this. I think you should go see a marriage counselor and see if you can work things out. You two already said you would try. So try your best to work it out, and then if it doesn't work, you can walk away knowing you did all you could to save your marriage. Sharon. Sharon sighed and said, I knew talking to you would help. She reached out, grabbed Eva's hand, and squeezed. Thanks, Eva, and be prepared, because I'm going to need a sounding board as I work my way through this. Sharon thought about sharing her reaction to Paul with Eva, but she decided to table it now that she decides to try to work it out with Philip. Leah. Carla approached the table with a cold smile. Hello, everyone, she said, only making eye contact with Alana and Mario. Leah and Carla never were friends or friendly. Hi, Carla, what brings you here? Alana asked, her easy smile now forced. Your mother said I would find Mario here, so here I am. Mario, do you have a minute? Carla rubbed her hand down his arm and pulled it slightly forward so that he dropped Leah's hands. I'm pretty sure we don't have anything to talk about, Mario said bitterly. Mario, please don't be that way. Can't you spare a minute for your ex-wife? Carla tried to look pleading. Mario looked at Leah. Excuse me, I promise this won't take long. He took Carla by the arm and led her out the cafe. Alana looked at Leah. If you're thinking she's up to no good, you are right. If you're wondering if you could trust Mario, I would say normally you can, but that woman has a way of making him do things he normally wouldn't do. Alana shook her head. Leah tried to make out what they were saying to one another through the window, but wasn't able. Ten minutes later, Mario returned looking upset. He walked over to Leah and said, Leah, I have to go. He kissed her cheek. I'll call you later. Before she could respond, he was out the door. Hope you enjoyed today's story. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be and stay blessed.